Welcome to the Athlete to Athlete series. My name is Rennie Kern. I'm a former professional athlete, speaker, leadership coach, and the founder of the Game Changers Foundation. Our mission is to help current and former athletes in sports, business, and life. Each week, we'll be bringing you top former athletes to share tips, tools, and strategies to help you change the game on and off the field. Our series is made possible through our amazing sponsors, the Sports Turf Company. Welcome to the Athlete to Athlete series. I'm your host, Rennie Curran, and today we have an amazing guest for this show, a Hall of Famer, a guy who came straight out of Charleston County High School, none other than Champ Bailey. Champ, man, appreciate you being on the show. My pleasure, It's an bro. honor to have you on, man. My pleasure. So, first question I always like to ask, man, is you, you came out of a small town, Charleston County, <laughs> you know, uh, I, I ain't gonna disrespect big town, Charleston County, <laughs> but <laughs> what was life like, man? What were your experiences like as a high school kid going through you know, just uh, being in that, uh, in Charlton County, man. Well, you know, for me, uh, I grew up with um, a younger brother, older yeah. brother, uh, older sister, very close in age. So I, you know, I always had my close knit family with them, my siblings. But, you know, outside of that, if, you know, any small town kid can tell you, you the community raises you. Mm. So, you know, I was very, you know, we were very well known in the community, but yeah. At the same time, we did lack resources. We did lack a lot of things, but, you know, always had that community to fall back on. Yeah, love it, man. Yeah. And I know, you know, for all of us, man, in order to get to that, that highest level, there's different yeah. obstacles and different challenges we have to come, overcome. No doubt. So what was one of the major challenges that you had to overcome and how were you able to do it? Well, it's very challenging growing up in rural South Georgia. For one, you know, I, I feel like, you know, one thing we don't talk about a lot is just poverty, mm -hmm. you know. We were in a uh, in an area where, you know, you didn't have a whole lot, and you know, my family, we did what we had to do to get by week to week. It was, you know, it was a challenging, and mm. that was hard to overcome, <laughs> to be honest. Yeah. And I think another thing that you know we lacked was good examples. Mm. You know, we just didn't have a lot. You know, most of the things I saw on TV were, you know, athletes and people going to jail that look like me. So just right. having those lack of the examples, you know, I don't think people understand how, how that really can, you know, limit your access or, you know, limit really your motivation, mm -hmm. you know, because, you know, if that's all you see, then that's all you think you can be. So, right. you know, just that visibility, it, it, it hurts kids a lot because I, a lot of my boys are still there mm. and they didn't overcome, you know, getting out of town, they would always go back home. Yeah. They make it easy for you to not succeed. And, right. you know, those are one of the challenging things growing up. Mm. Gotcha, man. And, yeah. you know, as far as, you know, your career, man, um, you were one of the best to do it. And uh, it's one thing to be, oh, yeah, man, you already know. It, it is what it is. But it's one thing to be good in Georgia. It's one thing to be good in college, the pros. We got a lot of kids who are going to be watching this who are wondering, yeah. you know, what does it take to be great, man? So what's some pieces of advice that you can give, man, when it comes to just excelling at a high level and maintaining that consistency as well? You know, I think there's a lot of cliches, you know, do your job, mm -hmm. you know, be accountable. All those things that mean something, they matter, you know, but I always looked at it like, you know, your preparation is everything, mm, Yeah. you know, so how do you prepare? Practice. So even to this day, I just tell people, man, if, if you practice like you're playing in games mm. with that intensity as if everything's on the line, you know, the games will come easy. True. The next thing you know, you got a great career that you could look back on. Mm. But you at least know you put it all out there because you spend 99% of your time on the practice field, not in games. That's so real. Put the effort there. Enjoy the process. Yeah, I love yeah. that, man. Preparation yeah. is everything. So yeah. next question I have, man, is I, I've always wanted this about guys, but we all got this right here. Something we do for the games, our, our pregame routine, man. So what, what's those pregame uh, rituals that you have, man? It's, you know, don't, you know, don't hold back. I, I try <laughs> not to be superstitious, yeah, yeah, yeah. which is probably superstitious in itself. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I never really had one thing I stuck to. I just always try to clear my mind, just have time to myself and never do exactly the same thing every time because hmm. 
you know, I, I'm, I'm trying purposely not to be superstitious, but <laughs> then you find yourself doing the same thing over and over. Right. I guess it's just a comfort thing. I didn't overthink it, but you know, I, I just didn't want to settle on one way to get ready. It was mm. like, you know, because when things come at you, you got to be able to adjust. And, you know, I always knew something could happen, throw me off my, my game, and I don't want to rely on one thing. Yeah, man. Yeah. Wow. Well, one question that just came to mind as you were speaking, you played with, I mean, so many amazing players, yeah. man. Who were yeah. some of the, the best that you had the opportunity to strap up and Ooh. either play with or play against? You know, I, I think... You know, fortunate enough for me, I, I came into the league alongside a Hall of Famer, Dale Green, who mm -hmm. had played 17 years at the time. You know, I ended up playing four years with him. And just to gather that knowledge. But mm -hmm. then on top of that, I had Deion Sanders. Wow. Now, these are two first ballot Hall of Famers that play the same position I play. So yeah. no player, a pro player, would be that lucky. Mm -hmm. And I got lucky. My first two years, I got all that knowledge early. Yeah. And, you know, I give them a lot of credit for setting that foundation for me. Yeah, I mean, that says a lot right there, yeah. just about mentorship and surrounding yourself with Absolutely. the right people, yeah. which seems to be a thing, man. Um, now, just switching gears, man, you, you had an amazing career. You, tr you obviously had to do something that we all had to do, which is transition, yeah. man. Yeah. So just talk about, you know, some of the things that you're doing now and any advice that you would give to those uh, athletes who are watching just in terms of preparing, like you mentioned, uh, the preparation when it comes to getting ready for life after well for one I, I would tell any athlete that's playing right now your brand is no bigger than when you play mm. like you're always on tv your exposure's there yeah i see how guys get that you know that instant fame now what do you do with it mm. and what i always say don't burn bridges for one yeah like, you know when people try to help you or or you're moving along just continue to make good relationships mm -hmm. you know be honest accountable and be yourself you know, I think you stay true to you, then things will come natural to you. And trust me, when when you look back at <laughs> all the players you played with throughout your career, you end up coming back to them one way or another. True. Whether it's college, high school, or pro, those people always tend to appear in your life mm. at some point in the future. So you just never know when you're going to need them. So just, you know, take care of people. Be honest. Be true to them and who you are. And mm. the sky's the limit. Love it, man. Yes, Appreciate sir. that. Appreciate that. We got one more thing for you before we wrap up. So, man, we want to just say thank you so much for all the information, all the knowledge you just shared. I'm sure so many athletes are going to be impacted by this. And as a thank you, we want to give you these headphones oh, yeah. from uh, Jabber, man, so you can wear these while you're working out, while you're grinding, doing business. All that good stuff, so man, appreciate you. I do appreciate it. I just broke mine, so thank you. <laughs> right, look at I guy. appreciate that. Thank yes, you. Sir. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thanks, Thanks again. Oh, yeah. Anytime. Definitely. Athlete to Athlete, presented by Sports Turf Company and the Game Changers Foundation.